My second most popular video on YouTube is a video where I talk about what hardware you need for DCS World, especially for people on a budget. And it's been a while since I put out that video. The hardware environment has changed, new stuff has come out obviously, um, new products and things like that. So I thought it's time to give it a refresh and see what in 2024 going into 2025, barring some massive change to how DCS works, what hardware do you need to run it? And we're going to take a quick look at CPUs here and RAM, and then mostly focus on graphics cards because I did update mine recently, and so I will be comparing the old one with the new one, and I'll also be offering some recommendations about graphics cards in general for DCS World. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here are my test system specs, and this is the system that I play DCS on all the time. My CPU is, of course, a Ryzen 7 5800X. I've been running it for a while, and it does absolutely fantastic. But as you can see here with the utilization, it's not generally too much above 50%, and I've got 8 cores and 16 threads, so really that's more than most people on a budget would need, especially if you're not doing things like content creation where you might have a bunch of other stuff running in the background. So a Ryzen 5 or Core i5 if you're a diehard Intel fan or whatever, either of those would be entirely solid options. In particular, the Ryzen 5 5600X if you're really on a budget and you don't care about the fact that it is a dead socket at this point. It is an AM4 processor, not AM5. But for only a hundred bucks on Amazon, it's a fantastic processor if you're on a budget and you just want to play DCS World. Of course, the Intel offerings are things like the 12600K and they are significantly more expensive. And with Intel having recently released the new Core Ultra series, it's also on a dead socket, so really your best bet if you want a socket that will have some upgradability is to go with AM5, which means something like a Ryzen 5 7600X. Or I think they may even have an X3D model as well, that would be potentially another great option as well. So now let's have a look at memory, and as you can see here, Right now, I've got 14.3 gigabytes used out of 32 available, basically. So, this is very, very close to the maximum for a 16 gigabyte system. Obviously, I'm running 32, so I've got plenty of headroom, but it, I would say that given that this mission is not a super heavy server multiplayer type workload that if you're just playing single player like this then 16 gigabytes is fine if you're on a budget but i would strongly recommend 32 especially if you want to do multiplayer and multiplayer in particular on public servers where there's a high player count and it's just going to eat more and more of your memory. I've seen it use close to 20 gigabytes and even over that in some cases when I'm on a public server. Of course, it has been a little while since then. It may, That number may have even gone up. So, now all that we've covered CPUs and memory, let's get into graphics cards. And we'll start off with the RTX 3060. I used one of these for a long time until just recently when I upgraded and there's not really much else to say about this card other than that it's currently a generation old about to be two generations old and it has a 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer which is a bit high for the kind of mid-tier card that it is but that's actually what you want for DCS and I'll get into that in a little bit but as you can see here we've got 1% lows in orange and average frame rate in blue. 
The upper two bars represent performance with DLSS enabled, the lower two represent performance with DLSS turned off. That does actually make a big difference. As you can see here, we get almost a 20 FPS jump in the 1% lows from 34 up to 54, and we get an even bigger improvement in the average frame rate going from just under 90 to 114. And this is at 1080p, which is about the highest resolution that I could reasonably ask of this card. Now let's take a look at VRAM usage, and here we can see that the RTX 3060's 12GB VRAM buffer is just barely enough for 1080p. Higher end cards like the RTX 3060 from its generation and from the latest generation things like the RTX 4060 only have an 8GB VRAM buffer and that could be potentially a real problem for playing DCS. So. VRAM buffer size is definitely a big issue and it's something that you need to prioritize if you're looking at getting a new graphics card for DCS because at 1080p this is what we're dealing with with a 12 gigabyte buffer. It gets even worse as the resolution goes up. Now let's talk about my current graphics card which is an RX 7800 XT. This card has a lot of rasterization performance and a 16 GB buffer, which is really what you want if you're going to be playing DCS at higher resolutions. And let's just jump right into the data and see what I've been able to come up with from it. I became completely CPU bottlenecked with the new graphics card at 1080p, so I had to run it at 1440p in order to see what my new card was actually capable of. And here the 7800 XT does do better even than the 3060 did at 1080p, pushing 125 FPS on average without FSR enabled and getting a modest improvement of about 10 FPS with FSR turned on. The 1% lows get a slightly higher improvement with FSR enabled, but it's still not quite as good as what you get from DLSS, so that is something to keep in mind. AMD seems to generally have the advantage per price point until you get to the top end of the GPU lineup when it comes to raw rasterization performance, but Nvidia does close that gap to a certain degree, or could close that gap to a certain degree with DLSS. So if you're into DLSS, then maybe go the NVIDIA route, otherwise I would probably choose AMD because their memory buffers tend to be larger, but of course take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Whichever has the larger VRAM buffer is probably the card I would go with if you're faced with two at a similar price point from AMD and NVIDIA. Now I was actually so impressed with the performance of the 7800 XT that I decided to step it up to 4K and see what it was capable of. So. Here we see FSR really starting to kick in. With it disabled, we get about 77 FPS on average, but it jumps up to 105 when I turn FSR on. And the 1% lows also get almost a 10 FPS improvement as well. So that's very great to see. And it tells me that this is actually a really capable card at 4K. So if you want to play DCS at 4K, maybe you only have to spend around $500 to do it. At least with current pricing in the US. I put together a more difficult benchmark here just to see what my 7800 XT was capable of on the Syria map with the Apache attack helicopter. And it still performed really well, so let's look at that data as well. Here we see that the 7800 XT really didn't care too much about the more difficult benchmark with 100 FPS on average with FSR enabled and only dropping down to 73 on average with FSR disabled. Now I did have a bit of an anomaly with the 1% lows, I'm not sure what's going on there, maybe it's the uh, more difficult to render textures or higher quality textures, whatever it is on the Syria map, but anyway this is the data that I have and now let's take a look at VRAM usage and we'll expand a little bit more on why I say a bigger VRAM buffer is better, particularly the higher resolution you go. 
for high fidelity aircraft, you also generally need a higher VRAM buffer and on certain more difficult to render maps, like for example, maybe Syria, as you can clearly see with the Hilo Havoc benchmark versus Easy Eagle. We're at 4K in both cases, but Easy Eagle is only using 50% of the 7800 XT's VRAM buffer, while Hilo Havoc is topping out at a whopping 96% using almost all 16 gigabytes of that buffer. So do keep that in mind, especially if you want to be playing high fidelity aircraft because your VRAM usage is going to spike considerably if you're playing a high fidelity aircraft versus a low fidelity aircraft at the same resolution. And it also is map dependent to a certain extent I would imagine. Syria map has been harder to run for most people than maps like the Caucasus, for example, so that's something to keep in mind as well. So I'll close with my graphics card recommendations for the low to mid tier price points. So if you've got $200 to le or less to spend on a graphics card, I would either check out the used market, or if you want to get something brand new, I would check out the RX 6600 with 8GB of VRAM. Those are going for around $100 90 to 200 dollars us right now so that's about the best deal you can get for a brand new card to run dcs at around 200 dollars now if you've got more like 300 dollars to spend then the rx 7600 xt is a very compelling option coming in at between 280 and 310 dollars us however there is also the rtx 4060 which is an 8 gigabyte card and it is coming in at least in my area at around 280 to 290 US dollars as well some models getting up into the low $300 range so the big difference here the 4060 does have a faster GPU but it also has only half the VRAM buffer the 7600 XT has 16 gigabytes whereas the 4060 has only 8 gigabytes. So really the big thing to look at here is are you going to be playing high fidelity aircraft or not? If the answer is no and you just want to play FC3 planes then I would suggest going with the 4060 due to its faster GPU and DLSS. But if you think you want to be playing higher fidelity aircraft and maybe even playing on more difficult to render maps like Syria for example then maybe go with a 7600 XT if your budget is around $300 for a new GPU. Now at the $400 to $450 range there is the 4060 Ti with 16GB of VRAM and the 7700 XT which is around about $400. Now, the 7700XT does have less VRAM than the 16GB 4060 Ti, but it is significantly cheaper, so it's really a matter of do you want to be paying about $50 more for an extra 4GB of VRAM and more performance? I would probably recommend the 4060 under those circumstances, unless you find a really, really good deal on a 7600XT, but they're both solid cards regardless for 1080p that is. And lastly for the $500 price point I would personally go with the 7800 XT. Of course I've already made that choice so really the big thing here is the higher VRAM buffer. The 7800 XT is slightly slower than the 4070 but otherwise I'd honestly rather have the VRAM based on the data that I've got where you saw it was using almost all of my VRAM buffer at 4K and well over the 12 gigabyte limit of the 4070. So unless you are a diehard NVIDIA fan and you really want to have DLSS and maybe you want to play at 1440p instead of at 4K or something like that, then I would go with the 7800 XT. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys right now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It took me a long time to put all of this data together, so I really hope this helps some of you out, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe if you think I deserve it, and I do also have the super thanks icon if you really want to help support the channel as well. So, with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.